Good day folks. Today I'm going to review a game called Stocks and Bonds. This particular version came out in 1964. It is for two to eight players. It comes from the famous 3M Bookshelf Company. Now, As you can tell by the game, this is a stock market game. And the object of this game is you're going to try to make as much money as you can buying and selling stocks and bonds over a 10 year period. I think this is probably one of the better stock market games out there even though it's old. It still works well. Let me show you how this game works. Okay folks, I'm going to go ahead and show you the components really quick. Um, the first thing you have here is your uh, stock market board. Um, this is going to cover a 10 year period which is basically 10 turns. Now in the first year you're not really going to be taking a turn. This is just going to be setting up what the original stock market prices are going to be and then you're going to be playing uh, from there to there. These here are your stocks and your bond certificates. Uh, there's uh, These are your bonds and they work differently than the stocks and here are all the different types of stock certificates. There's several of these and I'll talk about how these work here in a minute. These are what are called your security cards. After everyone has bought their stock or their bond, they're going to draw a card and this is going to tell you what the market is on the uh, following year. So in this case, this is a bull market that's going to be happening and uh, Shady Bros is going to be going up plus five in this turn. So uh, that's going to lead to this. This is the uh, stocks and bonds calculator. Now there is a bull and a bear side. The bull side is good, the bear side is bad. And the way this works is, since we've already determined that it's gonna be a bull market, we're gonna roll the dice here, go to the bull market side of the calculator, and then we're going to move the slider to the number that I roll. So in this case, I rolled a two. So we will go to the two, and then we will use all these um, prices here and uh, calculate them for the following year. This here is your record of transaction sheet and you're just basically going to be using this to uh, write down the stocks or bonds that you buy um, and then it's just you're going to be calculating everything just following the instructions on here and that's So the first thing you're going to do is set the prices for this year. Start with the number 100 as far as the price goes. Now you can go ahead and choose to make all of them 100 if you decide to or what you can do is you can just go ahead and set the original price like this. So you draw a card and it says it's going to be a bear market. So then now you're going to know that you're going to be on the bear market side of the calculator. So now you're going to go and roll the dice and the dice tell you a 10 so you go to the 10 and these are going to be uh, the fluctuations for each of uh, the companies. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, fill that out and I'll be right back. Okay so I got all the prices wrote down um, that I've they're adjusted. One thing I forgot to mention that on these uh, securities cards they're going to have a, um, a company on here with a plus or a negative number. You're going to also factor that into the um, final price that comes up. Now you're going to decide which stocks and or bonds that you want to get. Um, for example, if you decide to buy 10 shares, and these are in uh, shares of 10 typically, if, if you want to buy 10 shares of the growth corporation, you're going to take this number and times it by 10. This is how much it is per share. So for 10, it's going to cost you $1,110. And then the same with all these, you're just going to, uh, if you want to get 20 shares, you would times this number by 20, 30, 30, etc. Uh, now, as far as the stocks goes, there's a couple of things I need to talk about. And uh, one of them is what's called the yield. Now, the yield serves two purposes. Um, it basically is going to tell you uh, the type of risk that each of these stocks or bonds has. The higher the yield, the higher the risk or the reward. Basically what this means is the stock prices go up or down. If you have a higher yield, that typically means you're going to be making more money if it goes up or you're going to be losing more money if it goes down. If it's a lower yield, say 1%, the jump isn't going to be that much. And the other thing the yield does is you're going to be making a little bit of money each uh, year uh, as a yield. So if you went ahead and bought 10 shares of this, each month you would be receiving uh, $20 uh, of a yield. The higher the yield percentage is on each stock, the more money that you're going to get per year as a dividend. There are some stocks that do not give yields. The price of the stocks goes below 50, you will not be receiving a yield. The other thing I need to talk about were the bonds. There's only one uh, set of bonds here and this is this one. These do not go up or down at all. This is a constant price. You're going to be paying $1,000 per bond. And the thing with the bonds is the yield. Um, you're going to be receiving $50 uh, yield no matter whether the market goes up or down. You're never going to have to worry about losing money here. You will be receiving this dividend on every turn. If you own more bonds, you'll be receiving more dividend. Now, there's another thing that happens and that's called the split. A split happens if one of the stocks reaches $150 or more per share. What happens is the stock's going to split two for one. Um, that is going to basically slash the price of the stock in half. So if it was worth $150, 
then each stock will now be worth $75. And the split will be recorded on the board by uh, putting like a little slash here and then the new uh, number. Now when the stock splits, you are going to be receiving the same amount of stocks that you currently own from the market. So for example, if you have 30 shares of a particular stock, you will be receiving another 30 shares from the market. So now let's go ahead and take you through a typical turn here. I'm looking at the board and um, Shady Brooks has a very high yield. I might want to go ahead and try to do that because if I can actually score pretty high, I can get some money on my sellback. Now typically what you're going to be trying to do is you're going to be buying a stock and you're going to be hoping that it goes up and then you're going to be selling the stock back to the market because if you do that, you're going to be getting a profit. And what you're going to try to do is you want to try to have the most amount of profit by the time you reach the uh, 10th year. Of course, now what you have to do is you have to figure out how you're going to do that. Do you want to start with a lower yield knowing that you're not going to lose as much, but you'll gain a little bit? It'll be a little bit more uh, stable. Or do you want to try for some of the higher risk stocks knowing that if you score, you're going to get more money, but you also might lose money. Now, this game does have a little bit of unpredictability. Every so often, a stock that has a lower yield will go up dramatically or down dramatically, and the opposite can be said for a stock with a higher yield. Also, just because there is a bull market does not necessarily mean your stock is going to go up, and the same for the bear market. So let's go ahead and say, for example, I decide I wanted to buy um, 10 shares of the Pioneer Multiple, whatever that is. So I'll pay the bank $950, and I'll go ahead and I'll write... Then I'm going to go ahead and buy 10 shares, the name of it, how much I paid for it, uh, and then I'm going to be using this part to calculate how much I made or how much I lost. And uh, let's just go ahead and say I decided to get the Shady Brook. So I'll go ahead and uh, I'll draw this card. And this is going to tell me that it's going to be a bull market and that Shady Brooks is going to be getting an extra five to add to it. So now I know that it's going to be a bull market. So I'm going to go ahead and go to this part of the calculator and roll the dice and we have rolled an eight. So now I'm gonna go ahead and bring this to the eight over here, and now I'm gonna go ahead and factor in these calculations for the following month. Okay, so these are the final amounts that I came up with for the uh, second year now. That basically means I have, um, I went ahead and I actually earned some money. I, uh, the stock went up by about 13, so when I decided to go ahead and sell it back, I'm going to be making $1,070 and I spent 930 on it if I decided to sell it on this turn, so I'll have made a little bit of money. And so then I'll repeat it for this one and this one and this one and this one. And again, I can buy as many stocks and bonds as I wish to each turn, and I can sell back as little or as much as I want to. And basically the game is just going to continue on like this um, until you get to this year, and then everybody's going to count out how much money they've earned, and whoever has the most amount of money is going to win the game. And that's basically how you play stocks and bonds. Um, as far as my review on this game, I think this is one of the better stock and bond games out there. It's not very difficult to learn. I mean, you know, as long as you know your addition, and even if you don't, they've got a chart that you can use. Um, the game is probably one that I wouldn't bring out a lot, just because you know it's a this this is game is a little bit on the dry side. But if you like stocks and bonds games like I do. I think this one's a good one. It's a pretty solid one. And I really like the fact that you have this little calculator here um, and everything just fluctuates based on the roll of the die and on uh, the security card that you uh, draw. Anyway, that's my review. Y'all have a good day.